Seiko will never make a watch this good again. Is this title clickbait? Maybe a little bit, but I think I've got seven solid reasons why. And number seven, stick around till the end because I'm sure you'll definitely agree with that one. This is the Seiko 6139-6002, a vintage automatic chronograph that Seiko produced in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Surprisingly, they only produced these automatic chronographs in various forms for around 10 years years and it wouldn't be replaced with a quartz until the 1980s. The 6139 Speed Timer series was first introduced in 1969 and it quickly gained a reputation as a high quality and reliable watch. It was one of the first automatic chronographs to be produced and it used a unique vertical clutch system and column wheel that allowed the watch to be started and stopped with precise accuracy. So let's get into those seven reasons and reason one has to be design. One of the defining features of these 6139 chronographs and this particular model, the 6002, is its distinctive cushion case made from a combination of brushed and polished stainless steel. The case features a very contemporary 41 millimeters in diameter and had a 70 meters of water resistance. Modern Seikos are well renowned for their case design, but their chronographs are typically thicker than the 6139 nines were. The bold case with the almost hidden lug design was bold then and still is today. The watch was built for timing events and the case reflects this. The blue and red tachymeter has held up so well on this version because of how the case was designed. It's been protected with a tiny lip and the dial is also given a generous dome sapphire crystal to accentuate the viewing of the watch when you're using it for timing. Despite numerous modern Seiko chronographs releases, none have quite captured the aesthetic and usability of these vintage versions. The timeless design of the speed timers is a testament to its initial design. It has an ageless appeal that could easily be mistaken for a watch that was designed yesterday let alone over 40 years ago. But now on to reason two, which is functionality. The speed timer was built for a purpose. You can time seconds by the central hand and it has a clear 30 minute counter at the six o'clock. The dial is clear and precise and can clearly be read because of its bold printing. This is a functional chronograph that was built for timing sporting events and the burgeoning recreational sport of diving at that time. The omnidirectional inner rotating bezel allows you to record elapsed time and also countdown time. And amazingly, this inner rotating bezel is operated by the same crown used for setting the time, day, and date. The highly functional nature of these speed timer chronographs is something you just don't see on modern Seikos. The modern day Seiko chronograph almost feels like it's cosplaying at being a chronograph, whereas these vintage ones feel like they were specifically designed for this purpose. Reason three has to be Seiko's automatic strategy at that time. Although the El Primero is lauded as the first automatic chronograph, the truth is that three companies were simultaneously working on this complex task. Zenith, as previously mentioned, a joint venture from Hoyer, Breitling, Hamilton Buren, Dubuis de Praz, and of course, Seiko. While while there is a little bit of debate about who achieved this first, it's Zenith that is usually accredited with being the first. However, it is argued that Seiko was the first to release the movement to market in a fully serialized watch rather than just a prototype. However, this initial release was limited to the Japanese domestic market and wouldn't hit the US until a couple of years later. Regardless of who was first, the Seiko 6139 movement was advanced even by modern day standards. The crown is a mechanical marvel in its own right. It sets the time when extended and also rotates the inner bezel when fully pushed in. Additionally, the crown can independently change the day and date based on how far it is pushed in, a feature known as the quick set date, and still looks cool even to this day. The movement doesn't feature hacking or hand winding, but is very well built, and as you can see, has lasted over 40 years. This recently received a service and is running at plus six seconds a day, something modern mid-range Seiko mechanical movements even struggle to do. Reason four is its value to collectors. Over the years, the 6139 speed timer has become a highly sought after collection.
collector's item among watch enthusiasts. Its innovative design and advanced features have helped make it one of the most iconic and recognisable watches of that era. Along with many other icons of Seiko's past, the very utilitarian look and feel of these early chronographs has really stood the test of time. It's hard to imagine a modern day Seiko chronograph being this popular 40 years on, but who knows? Because these watches are so sought after, condition is everything. It's sometimes costly to restore a damaged one, so buy the best one that you can find. There is also a number of watches that are Franken watches, which are speed timers made up from other parts, maybe with reconditioned dials. If you're going to buy one, really do your research. There's a whole host of forums and websites specifically dedicated to these watches and an active collecting community. We've even done a number of episodes of the live stream that focus on the best way of buying these watches and what to look for, so check those out. Reason five is the serviceability of these watches. Despite being over 40 years old, these watches are still very serviceable and parts are available. Although Seiko no longer service these watches, they have been kept alive thanks to a community of specialised watchmakers who have devoted themselves to understanding and maintaining these movements. Most parts remain readily available, however I would offer some caution if you're trying to buy parts on eBay. The cost of servicing these watches will depend on the condition of the movement. Generally a complete service will cost between $400 and $500, that's not taking into account any parts that might need replacing. In comparison to a modern day Seiko, in most cases those mid-range mechanical movements are just completely swapped out because they produce so many of them rather than someone going to the effort of actually servicing them. One of the great things about these watches is there's still a host of aftermarket accessories available for them. Here you can see two fantastic bracelets from Uncle Straps, formerly known as Uncle Seiko Straps. Compared to the vintage Seiko bracelets, both are excellent upgrades. While I do have a replica based on Seiko's bracelet, the Uncle Straps are a significant improvement. The Uncle Straps are not only comfortable, but also bring the bracelets on these watches more in line with modern day Seiko standards. Here you can see it side by side with a modern Seiko bracelet. The Uncle version is very similar in terms of fit and finish. And a big thanks to the Uncle team for sending me these two straps in so I can show you them in this review. Number six is historical importance. If you're not familiar with how important these were on an early space mission, they adorned the wrist of one of the early pioneering astronauts Colonel William Pogue was an astronaut for NASA who flew on the Skylab 4 mission in 1973. Skylab 4 was the third manned mission on the Skylab space station and lasted for around 84 days, during which time Pogue and his crewmates conducted numerous scientific experiments and studies. While in space, Pogue wore a Seiko 6139 chronograph watch and an Omega Speedmaster. The ability to time things in space for their experiments experiments was crucial, so it was no surprise that he wore two watches. Pogue's 6139 was of particular importance because it was believed it was the first automatic chronograph in space, and we may never have known about this if it wasn't for an eagle-eyed collector who noticed the watch on Pogue's wrist and actually wrote to him to inquire about it. The Seiko's association with Pogue and its historic mission makes it a sought-after collector's item in this gold dial, and this version is known amongst collectors as the Pogue. You can even see nods to this historic watch in modern day Seikos like this gold dial Seiko 5. Here we are at number 7 and this is the one I think you'll all agree with and this is the reason why Seiko will never make a watch like this again and that of course is the pricing of this watch. Seiko has recently started making mechanical chronographs in their mid-range section again in the last few years but they are eye-watering prices compared to to their vintage counterparts starting at $3,000 RRP. When the speed timer was introduced in 1969, it was a lot more accessible at around $100. Adjusting for inflation, 
this is around $500 in today's money. The accessible pricing of these models and the accuracy and reliability is what made them so popular at the time. In comparison with the newer $3,000 Seiko chronographs, you hardly ever hear Seiko collectors talking about them. I will add that Seiko do make a highly accurate mechanical chronograph in their spring drive watches, but those are many, many thousands of dollars. Even the modern day quartz speed timers are very expensive. I bought mine for around $500, but the RRP is closer to $700. Even though those are popular, it's hard to see whether those will become as iconic as these original speed timers. So what did you think of my list? Do you agree? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, I would love it if you liked and subscribed to the channel. And I'll see you next time on Casual Watch Reviews.